when you look on the internet and you Google in what is the best size for a beta, you will get so many opinions on both sides and it's really confusing, honestly. Hello everyone, so today I'm gonna to be talking about one of the most difficult subjects in uh, beta care and that is the housing. So bulls versus tanks. If you're new to beta care and you go look up the topic of what you should house your beta in, you will find a lot of very conflicting opinions. Um, I find that a lot of the articles on this are very biased. Here's such scary things about each one, depending on what article you're looking at. So I'm gonna give you the facts, the pros and the cons of a bowl, and the pros and cons of a tank. And then hopefully this information will give you more of a non-biased opinion. So with all of that said, let's get to it. Now the first thing that I'm going to talk about is expense and if you're on a budget then this is a pretty important part that you might be looking into. Now overall a bowl may appear less expensive. You can get around a two gallon bowl for around $15. With a small bowl you're going to want a relatively reliable heater that um, won't overheat because you're heating a small space. So the heater that you would looking for would be around around $20 probably, your tank will come to around $35 to get your bowl set up. Now a tank. Tanks can run a little bit more expensive, however it's not that much of a difference because most of the time your tanks come with everything you need. So if you were to buy a tank for around $30 and then buy your heater separately, then it would also come to around maybe $45. So if expense is what you're looking at and you're trying to save money for a budget, you might want to save the $10 and go towards the two gallon bowl with the heater and no filter. However, if you're just trying to get more bang for your buck, then spending an extra $10 and getting with a filter and an extra gallon of water, then you might be looking for a tank. If you're in a bowl, water changes will be much more frequent, thus there's a bit more maintenance involved. The water parameters in a bowl will raise much quicker just because there's less um, surface area for it to spread. Um, all the ammonia to kind of disperse. But if you want to save yourself some time, um, say you don't want to do a lot of maintenance, then you might think that a bowl is actually less maintenance, but because you have to change the water more frequently, they actually pretty much even out. Overall, a tank will be less stressful for your fish, and less stress means less sickness. And the reason that a bowl is more stressful is because the water changes are so frequent, um, the water um, parameters can can change quite frequently. So in a tank, you're not changing as much and you change smaller percentages. So overall, tank would be better. Now the next thing that you're gonna be looking on is appearance. Overall, tanks can have, they have more room for a lot of decorations. So you can really fill them up with plants, cool decorations, you'll get bigger decorations, and the array of ornaments that you can have, and plants as well, will be widely opened up. The amount of ornaments that I were now accessible to me after I got my tanks was huge. Like it opened up half the store. And you might not be able to get this with the bowl. So if you're looking for something that's quite aesthetically pleasing, then you probably want to lean more towards the tank. One thing a lot of people might not like about tanks is if you don't organize them very meticulously, like I like to do with my stand here and all my ornaments tucked in baskets underneath, um, then you might not like the mechanical look of a tank. Um, if you just have it on an, a regular aquarium stand, you'll be able to see lots of cords from the filter, the lights, the heater, air stones if you have one. So if you don't have something that hides all of these cords or keeps them neatly together, you might not like the mechanical look of it. Now when it comes to overall fish health and happiness, um, never go for a three quarter gallon and never go for a quarter gallon. I know that a lot of people say two and a half gallons, which I can, for some fish that I have, I can justify this. You really have to see what your fish is feeling because there's some cases where a fish is actually less active in a larger tank. Say they have swim bladder, a large tank like a five gallon like these ones here would not be good for them because they need a lower, a less amount of water because it's harder for them to reach the surface. If they're, if they're an older betta, they might not even utilize all the space. So you have to really take the cue from your betta on whether or not a smaller or larger tank is better for them. If you have a five gallon and your betta never swims, but if you keep him in a one gallon, he's much happier, then it's okay to keep him in a one gallon. Now the last thing that I'm gonna address is bowl and tank style. 
the round bowl, those ones can cause a lot of distortion. So when you're looking at your betta, things will look distorted and they'll look kind of weird. I had a betta in a rounded bowl like that and it made everything look really distorted and sometimes I'd be looking straight at him in the tank, but the way that the water was being distorted, I couldn't even see him at all. And that was pretty weird. Um, and also the same thing that when you look in on the bowl and you see this distortion, that's what the betta sees when he looks out. So it can actually cause him to have eyesight problems. So I really hope that what you got out of this video is that what you want to look for is your needs and your fish's needs when you're looking into betta housing. Now, I know that there's a lot of opinions in both directions. When you look on the internet and you Google in what is the best size for a betta, you will get so many opinions on both sides and it's really confusing, honestly. So one thing that's important to me on my channel is making sure that I get facts out to you in pretty much a non-biased way. So I really don't want to try to push my opinions on anyone one way or the other. I like to make sure that I give you the facts and I leave you to make the decision um, instead of me telling you, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. Because I want to make sure that no matter which stage you are or what you're looking forward to, there's always going to be something for you on whether or not you feel comfortable taking the next step. So subscribe if you like this video, want to know more about my fish or more fish care in general, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Now, as soon I'm filming in front of the window, my dog just saw a kid go down the street. Okay, Sophie.